In this video, we'll look at the geometric distributions. A geometric setting is similar to a binomial setting in that we have independent trials. Each trial has only two possible outcomes, success or failure, and the probability of success, which we call P, is the same for all trials. Where geometric distributions or geometric setting is different from the binomial is in this. We don't have a fixed number of trials. We keep trying until the first success is achieved. The random variable in this case is going to be x, the number of trials needed to achieve the first success. That has a geometric distribution with parameter p. Here's how that looks. Here's some different values that x could take on. Um, and these are the probabilities that x takes on each of those values. Okay, When k is 1, that means that our first success comes on the first trial. The probability of that happening is just p. If the first success comes on the second trial, that means we had a failure on the first trial. That's where this 1 minus p comes from. And a success on the second trial, that's where that p comes from. And the product of those two probabilities is the probability that x equals 2. The probability that x equals 3, well, that assumes that we had a failure on the first trial and the second trial, and then a success on the third trial. And so we have p times 1 minus p squared. For x to equal 4, the probability would be p times 1 minus p cubed, because we would have three failures on the first, second, and third trial, and then a success on the fourth trial. If you follow this pattern, you see that we have a p in all these expressions, and a 1 minus p in all these expressions except the first. And the 1 minus p is raised to a power, which is 1 less than the number of trials we're interested in. So if we're looking for the probability that x equals n, that would just be p times 1 minus p to the n minus 1 power. Now, if you follow that pattern, we get the geometric probability formula, which says that the probability that x is equal to n is p times 1 minus p to the n minus 1 power. That's the probability that the first success comes on the nth trial. You can calculate this probability on your calculator using second bears e on a TI-84. It's geometric PDF, and you put in the probability of success, p, and the trial you're interested in, n. Now, you can figure out the probability that the first success comes after the nth trial. That's just the same as the probability of failure on all the first n trials. And the probability of failing on all the first n trials is 1 minus p to the nth power. It's 1 minus p times itself n times. So the probability that x is greater than n is 1 minus p to the nth power. The complement of that event right there is x is less than or equal to n. And to find that probability that x is less than or equal to n, just take 1 minus the probability that x is greater than n, which is 1 minus 1 minus p to the nth power. So you can do this kind of calculation by hand. If you don't have a graphing calculator, it's not too bad. And it's a useful formula. This will add up the probabilities that x equals 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever, all the way up to n. So it's a cumulative probability. And if you want to do that on a TI-84, we have a cumulative probability for uh, geometric distributions. It's second various F, geometric CDF. And you put in your value of P and the value of N that you're interested in. Now, geometric random variables have means and standard deviations. The mean is just 1 over P. It makes intuitive sense. Say you have a 20% chance of getting a success on any trial. Well, you'd expect to do about 1 over 20%, which would be 5 trials, in order to get that first success. On average, that's why this is a mean. And then we have the standard deviation is equal to the square root of 1 minus P over P squared. Now, where these come from is a little bit too complicated and beyond the scope of this video, but uh, um, that it basically comes from geometric sequences. And uh, that's going to take too long to put in this video. Here's an example. We've got Fred. Fred's a recreational bowler, bowler and he rolls a strike in 25% of the frames that he plays. Now, suppose he bowls until he gets a strike. We'll let x be the number of frames he bowls to get that first strike. And then we'll calculate these probabilities. The probability that x equals 2, we're going to use our basic geometric probability formula. We're going to plug in values for p and n. In this case, n is 2. So we're going to put in a 2 there. And then p is right there. It's 25% or 0.25. So I have 0.25 times 1 minus 0.25 to the 2 minus 1 power. 2 minus 1 is 1. 
1 minus 0 0.25 is 0.75. So this is just 0.25 times 0.75, or 0.1875. The probability that x equals 5, well now n is 5, so we just plug in a different value, 5 for n right there. But everything else stays the same, and when we put that under calculator, we get 0 0.0791 for those. Now if you want to calculate these on the calculator, it's very simple to do. Just go to second vars and you get into the distribution menu and uh, you can go if you rotate around by, cur by running your cursor up, scroll up, you can get the geometric PDF pretty quickly and then we'll put in 0.25 for our probability of success and then we can put in 2 as the, the probability that if we're looking for the probability that our first success comes on the second trial and then there it is on your calculator if you want the probability that x is equal to 5, same deal, second bears, geometric PDF, 0.25 comma 5, and that's 0 0.0791 as we calculated already. Now the probability that x is greater than 6 is 1 minus p to the n, in this case n is 6. So it's 1 minus 0.25 to the 6th power, 0 0.1780. The calculator cannot calculate that directly, but it could calculate this as the complement of uh, um, the probability that x is less than or equal to 6. And your calculator can calculate that. The probability that x is less than or equal to 4 is 1 minus 1 minus p to the n. It's 1 minus 1 minus 0.25 to the 4th power. It works out to be 0.6836, and that's a calculation you can use the geometric CDF for. So we'll take a look at that. We'll go to second VARES, and we'll go to geometric CDF, and we'll put in 0.25 comma 4, and the calculator will calculate that for us. And there it is. Okay, so whenever you're looking for a cumulative probability up to and including a specific value, then use geometric and put in that value geometric CDF rather and put that value in right there. Okay, the mean of this distribution of of x is 1 over p, it's 1 over 0.25 or 4. The standard deviation is the square root of 1 minus p over p squared, square root of 1 minus 0.25 divided by 0.25 squared. When you take that radicand and simplify it, it works out to 12. This is 4 over um, 0.75 rather over 0.25 squared it works out to be 12 and the square root of 12 is about 3.4641 here's another example we have another recreational bowler Barney and uh, um, Barney rolls a strike in 30 percent of the frames he plays suppose he bowls until he gets a strike and let x be the number of frames he bowls to get that first strike so find these probabilities that the first strike comes in the fourth frame, the second frame, after the seventh frame, in one of the first five frames, and then calculate the mean and the standard deviation. So you can pause your video, come back in a few seconds, and uh, see how you did. Okay, welcome back. If you want to find the probability that x is equal to a specific number, use the, bio, use the geometric probability formula and uh, plug in the given values. Okay, we have 1 minus p times 1 minus p to the n minus 1. p is now 0.3. And we plug that in there and there. And then 4 is the number of trials we're interested in. First success on the fourth trial. That works out to be 0.1029. You could verify that on your calculator. The probability that the first success comes on the second trial is 0.21. The probability that the first success comes after the seventh trial is 1 minus 0.3 to the seventh power. This is the probability of failure to the seventh power. If the first success comes after the seventh trial, that means we failed on the first seven. And that works out to be 0 .8, 0 0.0824, rather. The probability that x is less than or equal to 5, if you want to do this by hand, take 1 minus 0.3 to the fifth power and subtract it from 1, get 0.8319. If you use geometric CDF, use geometric CDF, 0.3, 5, 
and the calculator will give you the same number. The mean is just 1 over p and 1 over 0 0.3 is about is 3.33333 repeating. And then the standard deviation is a square root of 1 minus p over p squared. If you plug in 0 0.3 here and here and simplify, you get 2.7889. So those are the basic kinds of calculations you need to do in a geometric setting. You're working with a geometric random variable. And I think that pretty much covers everything you need on that.